All right, so um, welcome to Women Plus Web Equals Strong. My name is Kim Wilkins, and I teach computer science at St. Anne's Belfield School in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I also started a nonprofit um, called Tech Girls to get gr more girls interested in computer science and technology and have uh, lots of other things related to um, women in the web. And like I said, I have been doing uh, this conference for many years now. I'm a, one of the advisors now, and I've moderated, I've presented, um, I've participated, um, I've written many blog posts about it. I just think it's an absolutely amazing opportunity and I wish more people would take advantage of it. Um, and this year I was not intending to present because I just got back from uh, a crazy October full of tech events. And uh, I just felt after the election that I had to um, do something to um, feel like I was making a difference, especially where women are con uh, considered. So that's why I decided to go ahead and do this. And um, I'll tell you what inspired this uh, presentation in just a moment. So just a little bit about my history, which um, to the participants probably know pretty well right now. Uh, like I said, I founded Tech Girls in 2012. Um, before that, I have been in education, I guess, for about a dozen years now. But before that, I was actually in industry. I worked at IBM for a dozen years, and then I ran my own uh, web consulting business uh, for a while. And I kind of stumbled into education and teaching technology. Uh, there was a local school in town that moved to a new building and they needed a computer lab set up. So uh, my friend who was working there um, got me hooked up with that gig. And then the principal needed somebody to teach technology and he offered me that job. And I thought it was crazy. Teaching was never in my purview uh, ever as a career. Uh, but I thought I'd try it. I think I was in between um, other gigs. And I just fell in love with that. And that's, that's how I fell into teaching. But how I fell into being so passionate about women in tech um, is I went to a conference in 2010 called the Great Tech Celebration of Women in Computing. And at the time, I thought I was going to learn about curriculum to teach technology because I was making it up as I went along. And there was this K-12 track. And I thought, that's cool. I'll learn what other people are doing. Well, it turned out uh, all of us were kind of making it up as we went along. But beyond that, um, I, that's when I found out that women in tech had taken such a dive in the industry and in studying. So when I say computer science, women made up 37% of the graduates. And in, in, in 2010, they were making up 20. And I think it's gone down to 18% of the graduates. So this is just a huge problem. And it really um, impacted me and my thinking. And um, in 2012, I started Tech Girls uh, to try to address that issue at least at a grassroots level here. So um, that's how I got involved with that. And then I'm on my third year teaching computer science at St. Anne's Belfield School. And um, the thing I love about that is we're actually trying to integrate computer science into the curriculum. So it's not something that you can self-select out of, which is uh, one of the issues we see, especially with middle school girls, um, that their interest, they don't believe they have an interest or a knack for technology. I'm also involved with um, something called the CBIC Tech Tour, which is a local organization in Charlottesville that advocates for technology companies. And we run a one-day event where 400 middle and high school students go and visit, um, between them, over 70 companies uh, in the area that have tech-related things going on. Um, and that was this past October. And then, I just got back from MozFest, which uh, was also this past October. So like I said, October has been a, a super busy month. And then just recently, Charlottesville Women in Tech became a 501c3, and um, Tech Girls is now under the umbrella of that organization. So now we are reaching all across the pipeline from kindergarten up through women who are in a career in tech or like to change um, to a tech career. So this um, talk especially comes out of that uh, MozFest experience. So uh, MozFest is Mozilla's celebration of the open web. And it's all about bringing a whole bunch of uh, 
different people with different backgrounds who have different interests, but they are related to the web. So there is a learning space, a journalism space, a art space, um, science space, lots of other Internet of Things space, um, other things that Amira might mention that I've <laughs> forgotten. But uh, before the event even happened, um, Amira, who's on the line here, uh, brought together uh, women from all over the world to talk about what was going on with women in tech. So there was uh, women from the USA, South Africa, Kenya, India, Mexico, and Canada. So it was really a unique opportunity to get to be face-to-face -face with um, women from all over the world to find out what problems we're facing and what solutions we might try to come up with. And so I'm going to be sharing some of that with you today. And um, I know I've had the opportunity to do that online as well, but I think it, it was just great to be able to do it in person as well. So in a nutshell, uh, the problem is that women studying computer science uh, going into technology fields has been uh, taking a dive since the late 80s, early 90s. Um, that's one problem. Another problem is that the women who are staying in the careers, their quit rates are twice that of their male counterparts. So even if they go into these fields, they quit. And I am like one of the statistics of that. I quit exactly almost 10 to 12 years after I started, which is the quit rate that's twice as many, much as males. So that's definitely a problem. So the first thing we did in this um, session at uh, the women's convening, web and convening, was to talk about the problems. And I don't know if you saw the picture before, uh, there's a tree behind us. And uh, I think this has been used in social justice work quite a bit to use the roots to talk about the root causes of a problem and then the trunk and the, tr and the branches and the trees to talk about how uh, to address that. So that's what we did. We first looked at uh, some of the things we thought were root causes of the problem. And you can see some of this is uh, kind of fuzzy, but you can see things like uh, toys or stereotypes or confidence. Um, there's so many things that are causing issues with um, women in tech. And so we just try to lay a bunch of those out. And this is not the first time I've done this exercise. I um, have done this with girls when I tried to, when I was first starting Tech Girls, and, and even to this day, uh, we'll get together and talk about what are the things that they see are the problems with getting into tech. And you can see this is just an example of some of those things. Um, they think that it's not something that they would collaborate with, that they'd be alone. They think they'd have to be good at math. They think it's really harder than other subjects, uh, like there might be a lot of homework, or they'd have to sit a lot. Um, and so here, or, or it's just all about the money, which, um, you know, for some of them wasn't interesting. So this is just uh, an example of what some girls have said about what they think the problems are. And then I've also done this with educators um, to have them tell me what they think our problems are. And I'm going to go look at my other slide because that one's really fuzzy. So some of these are that um, the packaging and publishing of STEM is marketed at boys. Um, wonder if same-sex classrooms will just support more opportunities. They often see middle school, in middle school that girls' initial interest in STEM activities is blunted when they're in a group dominated by boys. Uh, the technology needs to be shared with girls from an early age. Uh, lack of role models. So these are just, a, a, again, a sampling of some of the issues that educators that I've talked with have thought about the problem. So what I was hoping that we could do today is come up with uh, our list of what we think um, some of the issues are. And I'm going to give you permission to, I think, if I can do this, um, to actually write. You can put it in the chat, or you can write on the right board um, directly, or you can try to go to this padlet um, and uh, put issues that you think are facing um, women and girls and getting into tech. And especially, I'm looking for what is going on in education that's causing a problem. So uh, if there are ideas or thoughts that you had about that. 
I'll just give an example um, at the school I'm teaching at. So uh, I teach computer science, and obviously this goal to get more girls in, interested in technology, even if they're not going to study computer science in the long run, I just feel like everybody needs to have a foundational experience with computer science and technology. So most of the time, I try to go into the classrooms and teach so that um, nobody decides to self-select out of something. But I did teach digital arts. Um, I, got, I um, got that added to my list of things to teach. I thought, this is great, digital arts. I can do that. I like doing that kind of stuff. And I figured it would appeal to the girls. And in fact, um, last year, teaching three different sections of digital arts, I only had one girl. And um, the rest were boys. And I had uh, two girls, two other girls, that started with the class and then um, asked to change. And when I asked them about it, they said, well, all the boys already know what you're doing, which they didn't. And um, they thought it was going to be too hard because they had never done it before. Um, and my response to that was, well, of course you haven't done it before. You, you're learning this. That's why you're taking this. Um, so they've got this idea that just because the boys were more comfortable around the computers, they knew more, and um, they would be able to, uh, you know, understand things easier. And so even by middle school, they were saying, no, you know, I have never done this before, and so I can't do it, which is very discouraging. So lack of exposure is definitely another issue. Access and exposure. Yes, unconscious bias, um, both in students and educators, is also definitely an issue. And Tasha says that at uh, all girls' school, there's a huge tension between requisite classes and extracurricular classes. And I, that is definitely true. Um, in Virginia, I, before I started this school, I did a lot of work with the public schools. and. Um, and I did my master's thesis on this and had a roundtable discussion with teachers from all over the place. And what they would tell me is that any time that tech was an elective and it wasn't going to count for a real grade, then the girls weren't going to take it. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see in Virginia, we just had a law passed where um, computer science has to be integrated into the curriculum now. What that actually means, I don't think, has been defined yet, but um, is that going to make a difference? Yep, and then um, add to exposure the lack of mentors and role models. I was just at an um, event this weekend, the Virginia Girls Summit, and while it wasn't strictly a tech-related event, it was a girl empowerment, and you know, tech always comes into that. But uh, one of the big things that I heard over and over again is there's just not enough role models, period, that are in strong leadership positions um, for girls. So whatever field that may be in, you know, that is something we really need to work on. Right, and if we're super college driven, if we don't offer an AP level, um, will the girls engage? Great. Well, I'm going to take these and I'll put them on this Padlet as well later. So we'll definitely keep. Yeah, and Amira says role models and leadership positions is actually a big thing. Yeah, it is. So we do know there's lots of problems. Um, I'm going to move on to the uh, solutions or ultimate realities. When I first started Tech Girls, I, I Instead of calling the solutions, I called them alternate realities, alternative realities, because uh, I just feel like that's what we have to aim for. Things are so wrong right now that, it, that we must be talking about an alternate reality. Um, and so on this tree, uh, this is where the leaves are. And again, I have done this um, with girls to find out what they're thinking. So showing more girls the world and technology, um, how girls can help change the world. So we are not making a good enough case about why technology can help change the world, even though technology is clearly changing the world. Uh, we're just not making that good case um, for our girls. And yeah, computing is about people, and the world is, about, is and the world is not 
They want to know about the fun stuff going on. They want to associate technology with positive fun subjects. Um, so those are just some of the things the girls have to say. And then the educators, I'll get to that slide in a minute, but since I have it here to read, uh, present more opportunities for girls to engage in stimulated studies. Reaching out to girls individually, this is actually a huge thing. Um, incorporating into other classes like history class. So they were talking about using the uh, real heroes of World War II, the top secret Rosies. And then going beyond SOLs and introduce female mathematicians and scientists role models as part of the curriculum. Move away from just dead white males, things like that. So now, uh, what kind of uh, solutions do we think there are that we should encourage folks to pursue? So Natasha said, lucky for us, the idea of 21st century skills is very widespread now. So I think leveraging problem solving and collaborative aspects of tech is really valuable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I think that is um, another thing that came up recently, that our educational systems subject areas are still so siloed when, in fact, there needs to be much more cross-pollination of ideas and activities and then the technology within that to make it relevant to the kids. And helping, Amiris is helping girls, women see how to solve issues they care about in STEM ways, show the intersection between things like arts and tech. Yep, for sure. Just because lack of time together with other faculty, right. Well, and that could help to be working on it collaboratively. So here are um, just some words of wisdom that have helped me uh, think about next step. Um, Joanne Cohoon, who unfortunately is no longer with us, uh, was at UVA, and she um, was all about more women uh, and bridging this gender gap in tech. And she sent out this tweet one day, and it just um, actually became the foundation of what we do at Tech Girls. So it's sort of a four-step process is that you spark their interest, um, you build their confidence, you nurture an inclusive community, and then you help the girls develop a tech identity. And so actually that is the model that we follow with Tech Girls. With um, We have a Girls Geek Day, which is geared toward elementary school girls, and um, it's a more spark your interest. They come for uh, a morning and they get excited about um, tech. They build their confidence with it, and then because it's all girls and it's a monthly thing, so oftentimes, you know, the same girls will come back, and so they're building that community. And then through the middle and high school programs, it's more, it's, it gets less and less about sparking interest and more and more about building that confidence in the community and then helping them develop a tech identity. Uh, so I just, you know, was kind of amazed that that tweet really set the vision for tech girls. Um, Laura Reasoner Joan, who's the founder of Girls Excited About Math and Science, I believe, or Excelling in Math and Science, one of those, um, she uh, said that we need to invite girls into STEM. We need to support girls to outrageous extent. You know, so it's not just good enough to make and build programs for girls, but then we have to really work hard to reach out to them individually and tap them on the shoulder and say, yes, you, this is something that, that would be good for you, that you're going to learn a lot from, that connects with your interests, that whatever it is, that that's an invitation personally to that girl. Um, so that's another uh, piece of advice I've taken to heart. And then I just got back from this uh, Virginia Summit, Virginia Girls Summit, where um, Mama Phelps, so this is Michael Phelps' mom, who also happens to be the mom to three daughters, um, talked about this need to have a mentor to rock the world. So we really need to find more ways for our girls to get to connected to mentors. And since we have um, opportunities to get online, you know, it doesn't have to be face-to-face, -face, although that would be nice, but we just need to be looking for opportunities and really uh, provide those for girls. 
Um, the other, uh, another next step is uh, doing this exercise, which we, which Amira um, helped us do at the convening event at MozFest. And I have done this for other social justice work, and I just really never thought about it for this work, and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, maybe it was in the back of my mind, but really uh, laying it out, uh, laying out who your target is, and then identifying who is for you and against you, and um, really figuring out how close their influence is to your target versus not, and it was just so super helpful. Um, what was really interesting at the events where all these women from around the world were is even though we came in and had many of the same problems and issues related to this um, topic, uh, where things differed is how we could approach them. Because where, uh, for instance, I identified um, tech companies as a good for us, like for us, and with influence because they have dollars, where um, from South Africa, they put them in the more against us category um, because there are quotas um, for gender equity uh, in South Africa. And so the companies are already feeling so much pressure that they don't want additional pressure, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, the other interesting was, one was parents. Um, I thought parents had a lot of, or could potentially have a lot of influence, and um, I kind of do, try to do quite a bit uh, geared toward raising awareness in parents, uh, where some from other countries thought that they didn't have as much influence because they weren't as involved or couldn't be as involved. Uh, but then when we talked about it some more, you know, they found some ways that parents might have uh, some more influence. Influence. Um, so again, I think wherever you are, this is this is really where the rubber meets the road in your community. How you deal with grassroots outreach, um, you really have to go through this process to figure out how you're going to take next steps and who can help you because you cannot do it alone. Is the other thing I have learned. Uh, and of course, there are so many resources out there for you, if you haven't started this kind of work and you want to know, okay, yes, I see that this is a problem, but I am not a tech person or, um, you know, I'm not a computer scientist or you're just not feeling that that's your strength, um, there are so many resources out here. And of course, Mozilla has a great community um, and great resources in this web literacy map that identifies uh, when you go to this website, you can click on each of these independently and get um, the definition of them and then actual lesson plans that you can work through uh, with girls. Um, there's also Mozilla Clubs. Uh, there's a whole community um, behind Mozilla that is um, a hashtag teach the web. And so it's just a great community and a great resource that um, I would highly recommend folks take advantage of. And then finally, this is just my um, list of recommendations if you want to start doing grassroots outreach uh, for this problem. Uh, you want to start small and experiment and be, able to, and be willing to try stuff out and fail. So I started Tech Girls in 2012. And my first, it started with a tweet, and I, I tweeted out and wrote a blog post and said, hey, I think I want to start this. And I actually got more global interest than I got local interest, but that was enough to spur me on and get me excited about doing it. I think the first time I met, I had um, six girls, and then it went uh, down to four girls. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was kind of limping along for the first uh, six months or so, but this last year we've reached 350 girls um, at least. So that's, you know, pretty big growth in a, in a short time period. And we have, uh, like I said, a 501c3 with a, 501c3 with a board now. We have volunteers um, from all the different walks of life that are a part of the organization. So. But it really is, um, you know, it did start small, and we did try stuff out, and it didn't work. Um, share your story. Uh, why does what you're doing matter? 
I have shared my story so many times, and I will talk to anybody about this. So if you ever need somebody to talk about why getting more girls in tech is important, I got you covered. Uh, create a mission statement and stay true to it. I'd say creating a mission statement isn't that hard, but staying true to it is. Uh, there are lots of issues, lots of other um, priorities that can uh, mission creep and things like that that can come into it. So you really have to stay focused and um, make sure that everything you're working on is toward that mission. Uh, if you need to do workshops and things like that, look for a space, um, someone who can open the door. I found not often administrators, but other teachers, librarians, special eds, um, gifted teachers, uh, just somebody who could let me in the door and say, yes, I could have their space. And then that would open the door for the rest of it. And then find partners and cheerleaders, uh, people who can partner with you, but also you need those who can just be on the sidelines and say, yes, go, you can do this, and um, maybe help you find those people that can open doors or um, find dollars or whatever it is you need to do. And then look uh, ahead and behind on the pipeline for people. So I was actually inspired by a high school girl that I went running with. Um, we were training for a local race, and I was just telling her about Tech Girls as an idea, and she was actually uh, the one who spurred me to help make it a reality. So it doesn't have to be somebody you know, who's already established or whatever. You just need that one person to kind of get you going. So that is all I have for Women Plus Web Equals Strong. And um, I know this is going to be recorded, so hopefully uh, more people will take advantage of it. But um, I'm going to open up the mic, and uh, Amira, Natasha, if you want to add anything. I really appreciate you like outlining the process. Um, we've just, you know, brought on a faculty member who's, you know, gearing up to start a makerspace, and you know, we're thinking of of starting a girls um, coding club. And, and I think, you know, there's a little bit of trepidation about about getting people interested. And I love the idea of sort of embedding in narrative. Like I love stories so much. You know, I love that that piece of like how to get the word out. Um, so I don't know. I feel really excited about sort of supporting um, like the teachers that are going to be starting these initiatives. Yay! Thank you. 